Hey guys, um, so we're going to continue the discussion of object-oriented programming this week with um, a lesson uh, on constructors. So we're going to talk about constructors and overloading uh, for the first two videos here. Uh, then we're going to take a look at association, which is a really important topic, and also the static keyword and what it's for. Um, so I've got um, uh, a project set up here. Uh, I'm just going to create a new class, and what I'm going to do is just create a new class to represent an object. Um, add a couple of instance variables to it and then show you how constructor what a constructor is and how it fits in uh, I was looking around for uh, just before I s rolled the camera for inspiration on what object to create and right here on my desk are two uh, toys that my kids uh, left here when they were playing Minecraft these are creepers so we're gonna do a Minecraft creeper uh, it's just a, a, an enemy a video game enemy if you don't know Minecraft so new Java class Creeper. Um, okay, so what defines a creeper? Well, it's got, I don't know, hearts. So we're going to do some uh, instance variables here. Uh, in Minecraft, they talk about um, the level of health of a creature as its, uh, or as a, of an object, as its number of hearts. Um, they also have hunger bars. I don't think it has a hunger bar. Uh, okay, I'm going to depart from the usual here. I'm going to give it a name. Shouldn't name your creepers, because uh, then you just have to kill them, and it's sad. Um, so I'm going to give it a name. Uh, one more variable. Actually, let's give it uh, a location. Uh, maybe it has a double location, x, y, z. Actually, hearts should probably be double as well, because I think you can have fractional, fractional hearts. Um, OK. So there's some, uh, some variables. Uh, now, now they're all private, so if we want to have access to them, we need to add getters and setters. I'm going to do that just really quickly with alt insert. Uh, I'm just going to add getters and setters for all of them. So I say OK, and now I've got getters and setters for all of them. OK, now that I've got that, I can create a new uh, Java class called creeper main or creeper test. Um, this will be where I put my main method. And this is where I can create a new creeper, like that. Oh, you know what? I should add a two string as well. I'm gonna, I'll add that at the top actually. Uh, so Alt Insert. I'm gonna add a two string. Again, I'm just using all the all the default stuff. Uh, so I just want to be able to quickly um, create and print a creeper. So I create it like that, and then I can print it like this. See. Uh, Control Shift F10 to run it. Move this over. We don't need all this space for that. Is it running? Yeah. It's parsing, blah, blah, blah. Doing all the things it needs to do. Uh, so this is what we get. So um, I didn't assign any values to anything. So by default, all the variables get the zero for that class. So for doubles, that's 0.0. .0. Um, for names, um, that's the special value, sorry, for strings, that's the special value null. So it gets the null value. Um, and I can't access that string yet. All right, so I have setters and getters, so I can set some stuff. So if I go, um, let's say I want to create a new creeper and give it some hearts. Uh, I can go set hearts. Um, maybe it's got 10 hearts to begin with, 10.0 hearts. Uh, let's set the name to be, um, what's a good name for a creeper? Chris, Chris the Creeper. And let's do uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, let's say it's at 100. Uh, C dot set Y, uh, 150 on the Y. And it's a three-dimensional world, so that's why it has a Z coordinate as well. Um, let's say 255. Actually, I think that's too high, 128. There we go. Okay, so now when I run it, I should see the result of all that setting. Okay, yeah, it's coming out in the uh, in the two string that was automatically created. So, I mean, here's what it took to create a creeper. It took uh, six lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, to create a creeper and set all of its values. Um, that's a lot of code for just a single sort of operation, what we would normally think of as a single operation. Um, secondly, in order to set those values, in order to customize them for my creeper, I had to write a set method. Um, and now there's a set method, which means that uh, I can go ahead and change those values anytime I want. 
But maybe as the programmer of the creeper, that might not be what I want. I might want to just give you the chance to set the name at the beginning and then never change it. So I would maybe want a getter, but not a setter. Um, I might want to give you a chance to initialize the hearts to 10 or to whatever you want. But then after that, I'm in control of the hearts. So I'll have a hit method. When the creeper gets hit, I will change the number of hearts. Um, when the creeper gets healed, I will change the number of hearts. But my code, the creeper code, remains in control. But when I add a set method like this, I'm giving up control. Um, I'm, I'm allowing the, the application programmer to come in and set hearts anytime they want to whatever they want. Um, so I'm, I, the creeper now can be you know, manipulated. So I don't really want that. I don't really want setters for all of these methods, for all of these uh, variables. Uh, I want them to be right once. I want them to be, I don't want to give full read write access. I want the user to be able to write these values once when they create the creeper. And then after that, it's under control of <coughs> other methods um, and code that I've written. So this is where constructors come in. Um, so what I do is I want to um, create a special method. So a constructor is a special method. It does not have a return value. Um, so there's no return type. And it has the same name as the class, including the capital letter. So it is technically a method, but it's a special one. Um, no return type here. Uh, and it starts with a capital letter because it's the same name. It should be the same name as the class. So this is a method that's going to get called when the creeper uh, is created. So if I put a system out print line in here and then run creeper main again, you'll see um, that line come out. See, the constructor got called. So what's going over on over here in creeper main is that, uh, now we said before, we kind of glossed over what all this means. The new keyword uh, means that the Java virtual machine is going to go get the memory required to hold a single object, to hold all those variables. Um, and then this part here, I said, I think I mentioned in a previous video, it looks like a method call. Uh, well, that's because it is a method call. It's calling a constructor, uh, a constructor with no arguments, like that. Now, if you don't, if you choose to not have a constructor, here I'm going to comment this out, the system provides one for you. So Java fills one in. Um, it's called the def, I often refer to it as the default constructor. Um, so this constructor always exists whether we create it or not, this no argument constructor, constructor with no arguments, no parameters, uh, but it does nothing. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm kind of replacing that default one with my own. Uh, but this isn't really the one that I want. What I want is one that's going to be able to set um, the name. So let's, set a, let's just do the name and the, and the, uh, and the hearts for now. Um, Okay, so I want the user to be able to initialize uh, the name and the hearts. Uh, so I could say this dot name equals name. So it's just like a it's like a big setter. That's most what most constructors are are big setter methods that set multiple things at the same time. Um, so by using the this keyword here, you can tell by the coloring I'm setting the instance variable hearts to be equal to the value that was passed in, which is in a local variable called hearts. Now there may be other code that you need to do here, other setup code for your object. I might want to at this point also, um, you know, add some default values for x, y, and z. Maybe the default location is uh, 100, 100, 100. Uh, but I'm only what I'm doing is I'm allowing the user to set name and hearts like this. So when I uh, when I go back over to creeper main, I think we will see there's an error message here. Um, what it's telling me is. Um, so creeper, uh, so right here, java.lang.string, comma, double. So it says, I, I only know about a creeper constructor with a string and a double parameter, um, and you have passed me no parameters. So what I want to do now is, instead of doing these set names later, I want to go Chris and 10.0. And now I don't have to use these setters like that. Um, and now when I run it, Um, here it is. You can see it's set hearts to 10 and named to Chris because these values got passed into the constructor over here and we're used to set those values. Having done that, I can now take away my heart setter so I can add my own special methods for uh, hitting and healing and so on that will control that and I can take away my name setter as well. I don't need them anymore. Um, so now the user gets to set the initial health and the initial name of the creeper and then they don't get to change it after that. 
they don't get to have unrestricted access to change it. So these have become write once, and then after that they are read only because they only have a getter in there. So if I go back to creep remain here, uh, I can still do these sets if I want to. Uh, I don't have to though, let's take them out for a second and you'll see that the X, Y, and Z are should be all set to 100, which is what I did in my constructor. Okay, so that's what constructors are for. Um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's all we really need to say about them. There is a different example in the guide here. So let's take a look at what the guide says. Um, it's using the circle four example. Um, and you can see here's its constructor. Circle four has an X, Y, and a radius. And they're all getting set in this uh, constructor called circle four. So I, I've numbered these classes because there's a progression of circles. Um, that's why it's circle four. And then you create it like this uh, by calling its constructor and passing in the three initial values for radius x and y. So a constructor is a special method um, called only once. It's yeah, you can never call the constructor a second time. You can only call it once. Um, and you get yeah, compact code. Uh, you get a, a new level of encapsulation. You get this write once thing. Um, and then here. Yeah, so here's another example of, uh, of the default constructor. So every class has a constructor, whether you write one or not. Um, but what it gets is a constructor that basically looks like this. So in this example, class name example, whether I write this code or not, ex the class example, I will be able to do this. It will have this default constructor, okay? Um, but I can't do this for the circle four class, especially because that should be circle four. That's a typo there. But once I have created a constructor, um, I can't do, I think I showed you this, creeper d equals new creeper. I can no longer um, create a creeper in this way. This is no longer allowed. I have to call a constructor that I added. So that's the, whoops, that's the default constructor. Where are we? Here we are. Um, if you want to take a look at circle four, uh, one thing I do want to show you about this is here's the UML class diagram for circle four. There's its private variables. Typically what we do is sometimes people sometimes people annotate these, but I usually just include the constructor as at the top as another method. So it's public, so it gets a plus, and it's named the same as this should again, this should say circle four. Looks like I've got some uh, typos here that I could probably fix. Um, but circle four here, uh, this has a constructor called circle four, and it shows you the three parameters that you can pass in. So typically put the constructor at the top, like I said, some people annotate them with special annotations to show that they're to make it clear that they're the constructors. Um, but in Java, especially because they have the same name, I don't think we really need to do that. Okay, so the Circle Four class over here in Week Four Code, there it is, Circle Four. Um, it's all commented, so everything looks a lot bigger. But here's its constructor. Um, it's been uh, commented here too. You should, in theory, I didn't do any commenting here, but you should use. Uh, java.comments like that. Uh, so you would do the creeper's name, the initial health, uh, and create a creeper. There you go. That's all you really need to do to comment a constructor. Okay, so that's constructors. Uh, that's kind of the final piece. Um, we didn't quite have room in one week to get to this, um, but this is the final piece. Now, um, you can have multiple constructors and multiple methods with the same name. Uh, that's overloading, so we'll take a look at that next time. In the meantime, what I would like you guys to do is, uh, in the exercises here, um, now, there's you'll, one thing you'll find is in all the sections this week, there are these dating profile exercises. I'm going to leave those for class. We'll work through those in class, but if you want to get a head start, you could try uh, translating this characteristic class, um, this, this UML class diagram to, uh, to a class definition. Um, we will, I, I think what I would like to do is walk through that in class, if that's okay with everybody else. Um, but in, there's other exercises you can do here. So uh, if you followed through last week, you would have created a class for like a bank account or a TV or a video game player or something like that. Now is the time to go back and add a constructor that allows you to set all the instance variables and then change your test code so that you're using the constructor as much as possible without using the set methods. Uh, but if you want a slightly more involved challenge, there's a couple of other um, uh, uh, classes here. I would suggest maybe doing the quadratic equation one. So the idea here is you have a class that 
creates that can be used to create an object that represents a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation has an a and a b and a c if it's in this form here. Um, oh, another typo. Oh my goodness, that should be a c, not an x. Okay, I'm going to go fix all this stuff uh, so that next time you see it, it'll be correct. Um, so yeah, a, b, and c, and then a constructor so that when you create the quadratic equation, you get to set the a, b, and c. Um, a two string that displays the method, you know, nicely, as nice as you can in plain text. And then a get discriminant, and as you know, construct, as you should know, a quadratic equation has two roots. So get root one and get root two. The discriminant is this quantity here, and the roots are defined by these equations. There's a plus and a minus here that differentiates them. Um, okay, um, and then here's some examples of, like, if you create with these numbers, you should get these two roots. Okay, so that's a slightly more uh, um, involved example to try. Uh, sorry for all the typos. I'm going to fix. I'm going to go away and fix them right now while the video is rendering, um, and they'll be fixed by the time you see this stuff. Okay, so I will see you uh, try that, and I will see you in the next video.